Hey guys, it's Al here from Vincent Al Podcast. And before I get into the topic of this of this episode of this podcast, um, I I first like to say you know and apologize you know on my behalf. Um, if you guys don't know, our schedule is uh, every Monday we upload a a podcast, and then Wednesday we upload a midweek segment, and then once again on Friday we upload a podcast or episode. And um, this Friday, you know, my job is to upload and, and Vince's, Vince's job is to put in the description, which he's done a fantastic job at. Um, but this Friday, I just, I, with the busyness and, you know, no excuses, uh, but I just wasn't able to upload a, a podcast on Friday. And I feel uh, really bad about it. And I, I, I was thinking about, you know, uploading on, on Saturday, um, but I just thought, you know what, let's just carry over what what we had for the podcast on Friday into Monday. Um, but how quickly life changes. And I, I recall, you know, last Monday where Vince and I did the NFL protesting special. And, it, and I said, you know, it's not something that we typically, typically are going to do. But we found ourselves on Monday once again wanting uh, to discuss something uh, that happened in our country. And if you're not in the United States of America, you know, that happened in our world, you know, it's not just something that happens in our, happens in our country, but it's, it's kind of, I would call it a, um, disease that is spread throughout this entire world, um, and I think Vince and I, from the bottom of our hearts, really wanted to talk about this and touch base on it, so you guys don't know, as many of you should know, um, I think it was either Sunday night or Monday morning, early uh very late or early in the morning however you look at it uh there was a mass shooting and you know the numbers are changing uh but the numbers that i'm currently looking at is there are 58 people that have uh passed and there are 500 plus injured and i'm sure vince is gonna say the same thing but uh this is just (laughs) just talking about it and you know the first thing to mind you know when i heard about it you know i was just heartbroken I was heartbroken. You know, I take, I consider myself a very compassionate person. And when I see things like that, you know, my heart breaks. And it just makes me sad. Um, but my day went on. You know, I went to school. I had a soccer game today. My day continued. My life changed. It, it, it in reality, did not alter my life in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is just how desensitized I think we have grown. Um, And it's nothing wrong with us, I don't think. You know, sadly, you know, terror attacks like this, mass shootings, car bombs, have just become a a regular occurrence. And we're seeing big numbers like 58 people that have passed and 500 plus people that have been injured. Uh, a, A car bomb in London or a car smashes into a crowd and 20 plus people have passed away. And yeah, it's, it's always sad to hear about it, but we kind of get to a point where we're, like I said, desensitized. Um, and it, it's a sad point that we are in this world. You know, they have constant news of these of these tragic events that are happening time and time again. And it's happening here in the United States of America. It's happening all around the world. And it's really sad. Um, but Vince and I do did want to talk about this. Um, because it happened once again, like I said, in our country, uh, but also the amount. I think it's the greatest mass shooting, not the greatest, the, not a pr- appropriate word, but yes, the the biggest ma- yes, the biggest mass shooting in the United States in in the history of the United States. Um, and there there are four things that I want to touch base on. The four things that come to mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna list them, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail on those things. The first one is the delicacy and just how just how fragile our lives are uh the second point i wanted to talk and touch base on is just um the the families the families of of 
or loved ones of the people who were affected by this um, shooting. Um, the third thing that comes to mind is what was going on through the shooter's head? What caused this? And lastly, what can we do about this as a nation and as a world? What can we do about this? How can we prevent many tragic lives or many lives? Uh, how can we just prevent deaths in general? So the first thing I said is just how delicate and how fragile our life is. And that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but I'll, I'll go into it. You know, these people that went to this concert, you know, they woke up in the morning. They probably went about their daily daily lives, daily chores. You know, they maybe went up, went and uh, got, went to the grocery store, got, got the milk that um, replaced the milk that was expired, all those things. And, I, and I'm sure they were so excited um, just to go to that concert. You know, I, 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 I love that feeling where it's like, okay, tonight there's a big game and I'm going to watch it. Um, and these guys, they're the purpose, you know, the main thing, uh, the biggest thing about their day was that they were going to this concert and they woke up just expecting to come home. And, and sadly, many people weren't, they didn't come home and the other people who were in hospitals. And um, I think it's just a reality check for all of us. It's, it's a learning lesson. Um, they didn't do anything wrong. They didn't. Um, but you never know when your last breath is you never know when you're going to take your last breath and it sounds very dark you know you never know when you're going to wake up if if you're going to wake up and once again that sounds dark but sadly that's just how it is our lives are very delicate and our lives are very fragile and how, and how cliche as it sounds you got to take every moment for granted and yeah you know there are times where you're just so da- da- um, down in the dumps you're like oh it doesn't matter um but I, I like to live my life that, um, that you know, just take advantage of everything. You know, you, you have to live your life to the fullest. The second thing is just my thoughts and my prayers are, are out to all the families who have either lost, you know, a son or daughter or a mom or dad or a grandpa or grandma. It's, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, hard to think about that. You know, someone lost their son today. You know, someone lost their, their father and it's sad, you know, and just the, yes, the people who are affected, but also the families of the people who are affected, because in some ways, it's, it's harder on them, you know, I could only imagine losing my, my father, um, it's just, it's just sad, um, the third thing is, you know, I wonder what was going through his mind, and, you know, something had to, had to tip him over, something had to have caused this mass shooting, something, um, I don't know what it was. I don't know all the details. I haven't really looked into the person. I, I've heard his name, but I don't remember it. Um, I knew he was a 64-year-old man. I don't know what, what made him, what tipped him over to go on this, but something had to have happened. And it, it goes back to, you never know what's going on with the person who's next to you, right? You might think you know the person who's next to you in math class, but in reality, you don't. You don't know the thoughts going through their head. You don't know if their, you know, if the, if their family is, you know, if they just lost someone. Or you you just don't know. You know they could be open about it, but the, they could be holding something. And you know, simple things such as opening a door for someone, or or smiling, or complimenting their their shirt, or anything small. You know, it, it can change someone's life. You know, once again, that's how cliche as that sounds. It can. It can really make a difference. Um, and who knows, maybe, you know, as sick as this may sound, you know, maybe someone didn't open the door for him and the guy gave up on on humanity. Who knows? Who, voice crack, who really knows? Fourth thing, what can we do about this? You know, I could, we could go into politics and go into all these um, gun regulation things and Democrats this, Republicans that. Um, but that at the end of the day, we have to find a solution. I'm only 16 years old. I'm in high school. You know, I don't know the solution. Um, and I think that's fine. You know, there's people who have dedicated their lives to politics and they don't know the solution. Um, but we have to find a way. We have to find a way to put a stop to this because I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get tired of 
listening about these mass shootings and these bombs and people driving into people. And there's an answer. There, there, there definitely is an answer. Um, and I, you know, I believe I, I think there, at the end of the day, there is, an answer, and I, and I, I think I know, and I know it. Um, but at the political level, I don't know. Uh, without much further ado, um, let's hear what Vince has to say about this tragic, um, just attacks. And I'm sorry if you couldn't get through this, or you know, if you got bored with you know just my my down voice. But at the end of the day, it is very sad and it is very tragic. Um, if you guys found this podcast episode, this channel in general, um, cool and awesome. Maybe not this topic, but this channel and the way it's formatted and set up, you know, please, you know, hit the like button, comment down below your thoughts, subscribe to this channel, hit the post notifications, share it with people, all of those things. It, it means the world to us. All right. Bye, guys. Off to Vince. Hey everyone, I'm sure Al debriefed you as to everything that is going on in the world, all the evil that is uh, that occurred uh, as of last night. I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. You know, it words cannot express the uh, the tragedy, the uh, the shooting, if you will, that uh, happened in Las Vegas today. Or I'm um, once again, I'm sorry, as of last night. I'm gonna continue to say today by accident because it it's so recent and I found out about it this morning, as I'm sure most of you have. To the point where not all the details are even uncovered. I woke up and my family naturally has the news on and and I and I saw that and at the point I think it said 40 were dead and about 200 were injured last time I checked the report and this breaks my heart to say 58 um, have have passed and about 500 if I'm saying this correctly have been injured and that is once again, no words can describe that. That is far more than a shame. That is something that, you know, people often look at a situation like this and they'll just be, you know, man, that's really sad. So uh, what's for dinner tomorrow night? You know, and they are very fast to look beyond it. And at the same time, who can blame them? Because no one wants to reflect on that tragedy. No one wants to sit there and ponder that. that that's going to bring down their day. But you kind of have to when people's lives have been taken and that family now has to suffer. And that person couldn't live their life to the fullest. It, it, it makes you wonder. My mom was telling me how she saw some guy on the radio talking about how he was fighting with his daughter. Fighting with his daughter, saying, you should not go to this concert. I don't know why you need to. It's going to be nothing but trouble. And the daughter ended up going. And on the last note that she saw her father, they had a humongous argument about it. And yes, she, she was one of the victims that uh, passed on to the other life. And, you know, she's in heaven now. Or ho at least we hope. But, and the dad is now coming out and saying, well, he never got to have a full conversation with his daughter, apologizing. Um, it, it, it left off as it left.
I'm going to take a lot of frequent pauses during this during this podcast because it's 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 just a lot to take in. It it really is. It's I was going to my government class today and per usual I'm the first one in the classroom and my government teacher he you know turned on the news and he said, "Do you know what is happening?" And I said, I sure do. And he said, a lot of kids at school don't know what's happening. And he turned on the news. And then my, as the news came on, my class started to filter in. And, you know, we had an open note quiz today and all that planned. We were going to go over a PowerPoint. We were all set to go. And then he said, you know what? You guys need to know about this. Not because um, I want you to see the tragedy, but because he wants us to know um that in times like this, we have to come together as a country. And I think he made a good decision. Because it is so relevant. And it's so relevant that that's why Al and I are doing this podcast episode for you. Not just because we feel so horrible for those that this happened to. But this is a relevant topic to talk about. It's... It makes you wonder... You know, should U.S. citizens have the right to bear arms? And I bet you right now, if y'all were to take a poll, I bet you would be, a lot of us would be saying, well, why should we own a gun? That That's not really what I wanted to talk about, but that was just a thought that I had. I don't know as to where I would lean on that, but it's, it's once again, it's another topic that's more relevant now than it has been in, in a while. Another thing that I was thinking about that I wanted to send a message to, I, I cannot describe to you if let's just say I had a friend there and I lost a friend, or if I lost a parent, or if my parents lost me, there's going to be a lot of anger, sadness, uh, nothing but depression for the next couple months. That's something I'm not even going to try to swerve around. I know it's happening to a lot of people right now, and I wish I could be there to give you a warm hug and just say, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. And a lot of people might question right now, you know, why, why would, why would God do this? One of my big questions in the world is, why does God allow bad, bad things to happen? Why does he allow evil to exist? But, in reality, that that sentence doesn't even match up. He doesn't allow evil to exist. It is us human beings that allow evil to exist. And what I mean by that is God never says, well, I hope this happens today. No, and it wasn't his force that this did happen. He's not like, okay, I want there to be a mass shooting today in Las Vegas. No. That is not what God anticipated, nor is that what he wanted. Now, you could say he knew it was going to happen, but that's not what he wanted. The way I, There's no clear answer, but to those who are just utterly angry, what I can extend an olive branch to you and say is that, no, God did not want this to happen, nor did he allow it to happen. The, the guy that, you know opened fire on this crowd of people during that concert that was that man's choice to do that and that is the definition of sin doing what is wrong whether it's against ten commandments he knew what he was doing was wrong I'm guessing but he decided to do it anyways that's like me lying I know that's something I should not do but I might do it or so many other sins, you know, hating or, you know, not loving your neighbor as yourself. That's a sin. Murder is also a sin, but they do happen because that is the individual person that chooses sin. One of the reasons I think we are put put on this earth and not like my opinion matters to the point where you should interpret life by what I'm saying. No, and I don't think any of you will, but. And the reasons I think we're put here, because we we do know right from wrong. And it's a matter of, are we going to make those decisions of right from wrong now? 
or when we're begging to go to heaven. And I think that's something very powerful. And hopefully most of us choose to do the right things now. But there's a reason why there's a heaven and a hell. Hell is for those um, who have not abided by the Ten Commandments. Those who, who do not want any part of God in their life. And that's been the definition of a lot of people in our entire history. Why did God let this happen? It wasn't his doing. It was that person's choice to do this. Because sin exists in this world. And that person happened to choose sin. There's nothing I can say right now that is any different than what anyone else is saying. Meaning, everyone saying, oh, my thoughts and prayers go out to you, and my thoughts and prayers do. But I interpret this a little bit different. I want to give you guys more of a message than an apology. I have a thousand apologies I would want to give. Like I said, if I met those family, I'd want to shake their hand give them a big hug, and say, I'm so sorry for what you have to go through, because I cannot imagine. I can't imagine. So, rather than saying what everyone else is saying, I tried to give you a little lesson that you are still loved, you will be loved, but God's not the one to get angry at. You just have to believe and understand that that person chose wrong. And they did. They chose wrong. Nothing can make up for the lives that are lost. All those people could have become someone in this world. And, and, and sadly that was stripped away from them. And I am so sorry. I'm gonna, you know, say my goodbyes. I'm gonna play my music like it's all good. But it's not all good it's not but i hope that it will be in the future because this is a footprint in the ground that is going to stay there for a, a long time we might forget about it in a week which i hope we don't i hope we don't forget about it but even if we do all those families that are affected by this they're not going to forget about it and hope this will stay with them for the rest of their lives and I am so sorry. I'm praying that whatever it takes for you to have some sort of positive light in this uphill battle, I, I hope and I hope it comes in the best form possible. Just know that, that that you are loved, and it is never God's intention for this to happen. He loves and cares about you. And I do too. And I'm so sorry that this happened. Truly. With that, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, stay safe. Stay safe.